Mirawai Beach is situated just 42 k's west of Auckland City. It is definitely worth a drive if you want to experience the west coast rugged coastline. Mirawai Beach has rich iron black sand which comes from ancient volcanoes within the area. This includes the large Kuiper volcano which used to be just offshore from the Kuiper heads. A lot of kite kontiki for shows enjoy a relaxed day up Mirawai Beach with friends and family and is a very productive way to catch fish. Always keep an eye out for kids and animals that are also frequent with these fish shows. And one thing that I like to do going along Mirawai Beach is you'll come across every now and then a lot of shells on the shoreline here. You'll see them here on this, this patch here. So what I like to do sometimes is if I find a spot that's perfect into a little hole or a gut and amongst those shells on the shoreline that's where I'll surf cast. What I find is obviously there's some kind of shell bed out there um, which obviously brings the fish in. Now also what I find is as you look along the beach here you've got the waves coming in and then you'll find a, like a little shelf that the water doesn't come up past and what it is is you've got sort of like a hole in a channel and then you've got like a sort of like a sandbar here and the water doesn't come in as far and then there's another hole on the other side of that so what happens is as the tide goes out you can actually walk right out on these sort of bars and you'll get out right right on that lip and there's a hole either side of that and you can actually throw your throw your line in there or you'll end up right outside that that bar, that sandbar, casting into another hole and, and a channel as well. So that's what I look for, is where the water doesn't rush up as much as other places. And that's letting me know there's, there's some kind of shelf there. So I could walk out there about 100 meters and it's only knee deep, and then walk out here and it's over my head. It's like a couple of holes, the shelf, and then the holes. So that's a couple of things that I look for when I drive Mirawai Beach is the shells on the shoreline it tells me this shellfish out in front here and then something like this you can see it happening now the water's going right out about three four hundred meters and it's only ankle to knee deep so you can walk all the way out there get out there into that next channel so normally what happens you've got the beach got a little channel sort of waist deep and it'll come up again onto a shelf and then out in front of that shelf there's a big sort of gutter and channel that runs along the beach it's, it can be up to about 10 to 20 feet deep and then you've got the main sort of sandbars again out sort of five six hundred meters so you're fishing in that little little gut gully that runs along the beach that's where the fish will come in they'll come in over that sandbar that's that's breaking way out there and they'll come into that channel and just mooch up and down that channel through the day better at night obviously early morning yeah that that's what i look for up here on mirai beach um, and that should help you sort of understand um, you know you, you could be standing here and casting onto that flat area and it's only ankle deep so you got to learn those shelves that sit here it'll go like a shelf hold another shelf hold and it goes like that sort of up through the beach so that's what you want to sort of look for now another thing that I like to, to you'll notice the waves here it's in a hole here and you've got the main sort of the, the sandbar out there that I was telling you about that you can walk out to over here but it'll break on that shelf roll over and then the waves will just start bubbling they actually won't break it means there's a hole there there's nothing for the wave to sort of come up on the shallows and break so that's letting me know there's a deepish hole there so that's why I like fishing these spots on the low tide 
it's getting you right out to that deeper channel these inside channels do hold fish but they're normally only about waist deep and night fishing early morning is the go for those spots they'll hold trevally snapper and obviously kawai are breaking at about 50 feet in front of me that's the lip of the bar there and then out in front of that there's a hole or a channel gut that runs up parallel with the beach that's where we're fishing out past there is the next sandbar so we're fishing in between the two and fish will be swimming up and down that channel all day just searching for food hopefully we get into a few When fishing on the west coast, what I like to do is I like to fish with braid. And what that normally helps um, is obviously casting for distance, but also you, when you get the surge and all the wave action and all that kind of stuff, I find the braid will actually cut through that kind of stuff a lot easier than um, heavy sort of um, mono. And the other thing, um, obviously, when you're using braid, is what kind of rigs do you use? So you got the standard, um, basically, dropper rig, which is basic, you know, tie it straight to your uh, braid, swivel, trace, hook, and then sinker. So that's pretty basic. But what I like to use is actually a running rig on the west coast. Now it's quite difficult to obviously have your, um, your, your sinker sort of running along that braid, up and down your braid. So what I do is I've basically got two leaders. So the first, first one is I've got to swivel straight to my um, braid there. And then I've got about a metre of 60 pound trace in mono. And that actually um, helps as well as like a shock, shock absorber obviously because you're using braid. But that helps, what that does, it helps me to ha have my uh, running rig. So basically I've got that metre of um, line there and my sinker will run up and down that line quite freely. And then as it get down to the other end I've got another swivel and then another meter trace so that gives me the running rig um, scenario with braid so what I do is I cast it out you're able to wind it up quite tight you've got the um, you know your sand spike sinker there wind it up tight and then you've got your um, trace right to the sinker fish will bite grab run take off and it'll give you basically a good sort of two or three seconds before it gets goes tight and then you strike so that's what I like to do out on the west coast is, is fish more with braid and that's how I get away with my running rig so just sort of basically two traces and that'll give you your running rig now looking at your dropper rig what I like to do is if I don't have a, um, a bait runner reel what I do is I use a recurve hook. So obviously you've got your um, swivel straight to your line, down to your sinker, and then you've got your hook coming out off the side. I've actually got the um, swivel that has the three hoops in them, and that allows my hook to be out into the side there. And because I'm not using the bait runner, and it's a recurve hook, I basically fish in gear. So the fish grabs the bait, and the recurve hook in the mouth pulls up tight, goes tight and actually hooks themselves. So that's how I use my, my uh, dropper rig.
He is hooked up. You're the king of a kawaii! <laughs> king of the kawaii!